Hey everyone, Cycreasin here, and in this composition lesson, I'm going to be covering leading the eye. So, what do I mean by that? Well, here we have a blank image. So, when you look at this, your eye doesn't have anything to focus on. And in image making, uh, one of the useful tricks or techniques is to control uh, the viewer's eye so they stay on the page. You don't want the viewer to be looking off the page. You want them to stay on the page. And in this image, because it's blank, our eye doesn't know where to focus. So we might look off the page. We might look on the page, but then, you know, or I might just travel around and that's not good for composition's sake. Now, probably the most basic way of keeping the viewer's eye on the page is to do something like this, which is to frame the image. So what's going on now is that pretty much all the, the edges, it's like a border and it's darker around the edges. So what your eye does is it goes towards the middle, right? Because this area is more light. And so it naturally is gonna keep your eye on the page. Now your eye isn't really going anywhere um, you're not traveling around the image, but you're staying on the page. Now, here's another example. And instead of uniformly darkening all the edges, what I've done is created more like a, um, a little bit like a spotlight. So in this image, you definitely look at this area. At least I do. Um, so if you're looking, if this is the whole image, then you're only going to focus here. And that's good. That's what we want is in this case uh, is to keep the viewer's eye where you want it to go. And this was something uh, when I first uh, learned about this, I felt it was really cool because I didn't know I had that control that, hey, I can make someone else look where I want them to look in my image. I don't have to tell them anything. I don't have to say, hey, look here. If I just arrange the composition uh, in the right way, then they will almost have to do, have to look where I want them to look. Um, so here what I've done is I've put an arrow in. And now, even though before our eye was focused here, um, because of the symbol, the arrow, our eye now wants to go here and go off the page. Uh, and usually you don't want the eye to go off the page, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how things like this, symbols can override uh, this kind of subtle, um, you know, value change to keep your eye on the page. So uh, where this comes into practical use is, let's say you had a figure and this was, I don't know, let's say it's a sword or, or, or something and, and you got this guy and he's holding a sword, uh, then maybe if you want uh, the eye to stay on the page, uh, this isn't the best way to do it because now your eye wants to go off the page. So here's another thing. So here we had an arrow before and it makes your eye want to go off here, right, to the left. But now, at least for me, my eye wants to go this way, off the page to the right. And that's because we have the most powerful symbol for humans, which is a human face and especially the eyes. So wherever the eyes are looking, it's very difficult for us not to look in that same direction. It's just, you know, hardwired into our psychology is to follow other people's eyes. Um, so this is also very important. If you have an image and you have a person in it and they're looking in a certain direction, just keep in mind that the viewer is going to be drawn towards that direction. Uh, it's just like this arrow is getting us to look a certain way. Well, in this case, the eyes are getting us to look in another way. So here's an example of an image I did. I did it in one of the speed painting videos. And I'm using a lot of the techniques uh, to keep your eye on the page. So the obvious one is that I darkened all the corners. So your eye wants to go to the middle. Um, but there's some other things. So 
whenever you have straight lines like this, these are all the straight lines, you have to be aware that your eye is going to follow them. Uh, they're almost like roads uh, or rivers that are just, they have a current and you want to follow that current, right? So here we have this straight line that makes our eyes want to go down this way and perhaps off the page. But the reason it doesn't is because you've got this, right? So this uh, blade is actually changing the direction and it's causing the eye to go up. And now it follows the hair and then it can go up this way, back to the hand and then down. And so the eye is staying on the page. Um, it could go down this feather, but then what's going to happen is there's a shadow on the snow and that's going to lead the eye back up here, which is going to, again, get you trapped. So this is something that illustrators use a lot because you want the eye to stay on the page and uh, you want to point towards the area of the most interest. So in this case, her face, maybe her body. Um, and then everything else should be less detailed or uh, less eye-catching. So you have a wolf here, but he's not very detailed in value. And also, he's looking at her. If he was looking off the page, or she, it could be a she-wolf, um, that would be different. That would be taking your eye off the page. Uh, even these trees, right? They're sort of framing it so that we look in this direction. So pretty much everything in this uh, image is telling your eye, hey, look here, this is where I want you to look. And you can do things uh, with first and second reads. So here's another example. And now in this image, when I just look at it, my eye wants to immediate, or it doesn't want to, it just immediately goes to these areas. And it's because it's the brightest, it has the most contrast. But then very quickly, I kind of get stuck on her face. So why does that happen? Well, again, the obvious thing is these hands. Um, but actually, I want the viewer to look at the face. So these would be the first read, and this would be the second read. But I want it so that your eye doesn't get off her face. And how did I achieve that? Well, one of the ways, and there's an extremely blatant way, is these arrows. So <laughs> there's actually an arrow right here. And they're all pointing, and if you follow it, yoop, you go straight to her face. So that's a, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty sad in a way that <laughs> resorting to such an obvious gimmick. Um, but yeah, it works, right? So if you looked here, then your eye is going to follow this and then go up and go towards her face. If you look at the hands, what's going to happen is you'll focus on the hands first, but then your eye is going to travel down this way and then go to her face. If you look at this hand, same thing. It's going to go this way and go to her face. If you look at this, it might lead you off the page, but it's actually easier for your eye to go in this direction and then again go to her face. Uh, so anytime you have things like this where it's pointing, it can be pointing off the page, but if you have something like this, see how it gets darker here? that can change the direction and then you come around back up here um, these areas this closed loop what that does is if your eye is trying to get off the page this way doesn't work you're led back up here to the face and again here so i mean it might seem like it's a lot to put into just to keep a viewer's eye on the page, but actually uh, this is something that illustrators do. And if you look at paintings by um, Dutch painters, for instance, in particular guys like Rembrandt, uh, they use techniques like this all the time. So it's a very widely used uh, trick or technique in especially illustration, but also in fine art. Um, and it's very powerful to be able to control where someone looks. So it might seem like, you know, sometimes people look at images and they say, you know, I like this image and I don't know why. Uh, might just be because someone is tricking you. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that's that lesson or this lesson, and I hoped it helped. And uh, the next lesson is going to be on contrast. So thanks for watching and see you next time.